Welcome to game two of today's Verizon for the Hoops Cure Classic here at St. Francis. There's some games going on over at Milton, but we're coming to you live from St. Francis. So we've got the Greater Atlanta Christian Spartans going up against the Brewbreaker Tech Rams from Montgomery, Alabama. Greater Atlanta Christian 1-0 after a 73-61 win over Lakeview. 32 Tyler O'Brien. Up to tip for, and Brubaker Tech gets the ball. Rams, number five, Sean Barnes brings it up the court. Shane Parker up top. Williams out to Parker. They're gonna call an off ball foul on Sean Barnes with a push. Ball inbound to Jakob Hoffman. I think this one could easily turn into a track meet. I haven't seen Brubaker Tech play up to this point. Jakob Hoffman with a three early on. That's the first attempt for the Spartans, and they're up to an early 3-0 lead. Like you said, a lot of running. These teams were, uh, the Rams were pressing. Long pass to, to Jakob Hoffman, wide open three, and it's 3-0 up early. Parker drives the lane, dishes it to pardon me, Barnes by the lane, dishes it to Parker, no good. Hoffman with the rebound, he pushes it up the floor. Covington dishes it inside to O'Brien, who puts it outside to Hinton. That ball hits the wire above the rim and is going to go to the Rams. Let's take a look at that ATL Peach Elite Instant Replay, Jakob Hoffman. Yaki from the outside. Talk with Coach prior to the game. Coach Eaton there for GAC. I mentioned that Hoffman recently got some interest from Creighton. Prior to that, it was a lot of D2s and D3s, but some guys at the top level taking notice. Defensive play from the Spartans. Out in transition. Brian Coffey just a little too strong in the layup. But you got to like what you see early from the defense of Greater Atlanta Christian knocking a ball away, get out in transition early. You know, team game, but in essence, you know, especially from the point guard spot, this is Coffee's show to run. Uh, so you want to see him being aggressive early, even if you know he doesn't make as many early on. Get loose. They're going to need him uh, throughout this season. Austin Rogers with the baseline jumper short. Hoffman with the rebound. He pushes it up floor. Out to the wing on Coffee. Shake left. Shoots the three, and that one's good. Two threes for Greater Atlanta, Atlanta Christian on their first two attempts. And it's a 6-0 lead early here for the Spartans. Jalen Williams down low to Austin Rogers. Pass along the baseline to Barnes. His layup is no good. Rebounded. Back out to Barnes. He drives the lane, dishes it down to Parker. Rogers tried to make a big man move down on the baseline and just wasn't enough. Hoffman on the other side, another wide open three. That one is in and out. And an ooh from the crowd as they knew that was about to be a 9-0 lead. Close, but no cigar from Hoffman there. No hesitation on the shot coming up from Hoffman, which you'd like to see from a junior guard. Pardon me, Hoffman is a senior. You know, I mentioned, I gave the disclaimer that I haven't seen Brew Baker Tech a ton. So a lot of what I'm saying is, you know, just based off the initial test that we've seen over the past few minutes. But I think speeding the game up, making it a track meet is going to benefit them more, even though you got players like Coffee and Covington that can run with you. I think the half court benefits GAC more just in terms of some of the length they have across the board. Hinted on the baseline, threw in a very well-timed pass to Charlie O'Brien. Turned to his right and had a pretty easy layup and just didn't quite give it enough power as uh, as he needed. But sounded like a lot of basketball there on that play, Colin. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't hear any hand or finger. A lot of basketball, <laughs> but nonetheless, 
Garrett Covington at the line. He misses his first one. Let's see if he can make this second one or will the ball truly never lie. Covington, a good pedigree. Father John played football at Notre Dame. Also uh, had a stint with the Indian Indianapolis Colts there in the NFL as well. So some athleticism in the genes. Jawan Cortner into the game, brings it up the floor. Open three, Austin Rogers long. Coffey pushes the pace, dishes it out to Hoffman. Deep three, short, no good. Hinton skies the rebound, powers back up. And that's the first two points here for the big man, Chris Hinton. Like you said, Marcus, I think uh, playing a half-court set, playing slow and trying to work the ball around is not really going to work in the Rams' favor today. Uh, Chris Hinton is a big body. They've got taller forwards than, than the Rams do. Yeah. And so playing in transition, trying to speed the game up and blow by GAC, I think is going to benefit Brubaker Tech. But I haven't seen a whole lot of that yet so far. 32, Chandler Lewis checks in. For Jalen Williams on Brubaker's side of the ball at number 12, Hunter McIntosh checks in for Hoffman. I was just going to say for the Brubaker Tech side of things, and we're going to go with Brew Tech so that I avoid that uh, verbal stumble uh, <laughs> moving forward. But I, I think I agree. Jalen Williams, six seven, man, he's you know the most height that they have. He's going to sit for a second. So maybe coach is thinking the same thing we're thinking. Maybe a little bit more of a mobile unit as they try to crank things up. GAC matched them with that mobile unit, took out Hinton, took out one of their larger uh, guards, shooting guards in, in Hoffman. So we've got a little bit of a smaller set here on the floor. It looks like GAC's Charlie O'Brien is what, about 6'7", probably. Tallest player on the court right now. Chandler Lewis down low, gets his shot blocked by O'Brien. Back out to, to, to the top for Brute Tech. Shane Parker again tries to body down low, and he gets that one to go over top of the lanky O'Brien. And that is the first two points for Brute Tech here. I think one thing we've seen from Brute Tech, even though the ball hasn't went through the hole as much as they like, they don't mind putting the head down attacking. They've had some strong opportunities there on the offensive glass. So I think one way or another, they're going to make sure they stay in striking distance. Parker again down low. This time sounded like a lot of ball, but <laughs> Parker will go to the line to shoot two. Pardon me, Austin Rogers to the line to shoot two. Nike would be proud to see this matchup uh, here on SUV TV. The Jumpman logos for both squads. We're focused on the ball first and foremost, obviously, but pretty, you know. No, I, I agree. The first thing I noticed when GAC took off that their warm-ups, so they've got some fresh red and blacks on right now. But like you said, a little Jordan logo on both the chests of these teams. Hinton tried to rebound, ball outside. Great play by Desmond Williams to keep it alive for Brew Tech, and then he shoots a three from the baseline, no good. Rebounded by Basil Peterson. Out to Covington. Top of the, top of the key is McIntosh. They're going to call a hand-checking foul on Desmond Williams of Brutech. 9-3 is the score. 2.43 left to play in the first quarter. GAC with the ball. Like we said, GAC in the all-blacks, Brutech in the all-whites. Anthony Carter, a three from the top of the lane. Hey, I got to give Carter credit on that one. When he, <laughs> I haven't seen much of Carter when he first took that shot. I was questioning, does Coach want him taking that? It was not a pretty form. I don't know if he didn't have a good, uh, if he didn't corral the ball in well, but ball went in. Can't, uh, can't argue with, with the results. Agreed. And a good defensive stand from the Spartans as they get. A foul called on Brutek. They will get the ball here to the Spartans. 12-3 lead. It's three of four from beyond the arc early. I think you're going to see that three ball fly for the Spartans throughout this game. Hitting up top. Powerful drive lane up and under. Could not get it to go, but a good move from the big man. That's it. 
Rogers again tries to body down low. His shot is off. Hinton with the rebound, and, and Rogers commits a foul. That is their sixth foul already. Not even done with the first quarter, and they are at six. GAC has two. So we're looking at a lot of threes from GAC. We're going to probably be looking at a lot of free throws, depending on how this, uh, this game continues. Brutech has not been keeping their hands to themselves so far. Coffee takes the ball up, hitting outside, wide open for number five, Buck Blands. Good look from Chris Hinton. He saw Blands cut. Good off ball screen from number two, Basil Peterson, and led up to a Blands wide open layup. And you talked about that foul disparity. You know, it's not like we've seen Blue Tech settle for a bunch of jump shots. They're putting the ball on the deck, attacking the inside hard. I think GAC has done a good job of defending, but without fouling. Make them take and hit those tough shots versus just fouling. Yeah, Chris Hinton down low, big body. He's got the kind of size where he doesn't need to leave the floor. You, you have to go over him or you have to go around him. You're not going to go through him. So he's done a good job of, of not making those fouls or making those plays that get called for a foul if your feet leave the air. Long three for Desmond Williams, and it's good. First long ball of the day for Brute Tech. Desmond Williams with his first yes, points. Yes, Williams said we haven't taken a bunch of threes, but you know we'll take it when need be. Knocks that one down. Ball into Hinton down low. He gets it batted away from him out to Coffey up top. Coffey tries to shake a defender. Nothing doing. McIntosh back to Coffey. They're going to reset up top. Blands sets the pick, rolls in the lane, nothing doing. Coffey gets the ball stripped from him. He's on the floor, passes it out, and out of bounds. A lot of shaking, a lot of body movement, a lot of dribbling from Coffey, but not really any productive movement made. Didn't really shake a defender, didn't make any move to the basket, just kind of moved his, moved his feet, acted like he was going to shimmy shake a little bit, and uh, got the ball tipped away from him. Brutech ball. We've got a foul here on the floor. That's going to be on number 20, Brian Coffey. That's his first, GAC's fourth, as the Spartans lead 14 to 6 here with a little over 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Inbounder gets the ball back. Three is short. Coffey with the rebound. Coffey's got some ups. He's back at the top of the key, shakes the defender, drives left, up, under. Not enough spin on the ball off the backboard. Good take, though. As Sidney Lovelace gets the ball here, back out to Desmond Williams. Williams with a three. That's just off. Hinton, powerful rebound. Goes up, grabs it with one hand, and just brings it down. Coffee with a jumper from the elbow, no good. Buck Blands with a try at the end of the quarter, and that one is no good either. So at the end of one, we've got a 14-6 ball game in favor of the George, uh, Greater Atlanta Christian Spartans. Brutech, six points, one three, a jumper, and a free throw. You see we'll Des be, Desmond Williams with that triple via the ATO PC lead instant replay. That's the lone triple here for Brutech. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> network as explained in a galaxy far, far away. Some networks promise unlimited data. Then they slow your downloads after just a gig or two. Verizon doesn't slow your stuff. Because when data is your only hope, better matters. Star Wars The Force Awakens, December 18th. Greater Atlanta with the inbound here as the second quarter begins. 14 to 6, Spartans lead the Rams. Coming in out to Hoffman. Hoffman left to Coffee. 
Coffey in to O'Brien, who gets the ball taken away from him, but no, a foul is called. I thought there was a travel, and then I thought he just gave the ball up, but no, we're going to have a foul here on Sydney Lovelace of Brubaker Tech. That's their seventh, and Charlie O'Brien to the line for a one-and-one. One. Charlie O'Brien at the free throw line for GAC. You mentioned that foul situation and it creating a lot of free throws uh, for GAC. Doesn't take us long to the second quarter to see that come to fruition. Right you are, and O'Brien knocks down the first. Yeah. O'Brien's second is good. Knocks it out to a 10-point lead for the Spartans. Wes Desmond Williams brings the ball up here. Brutek works it around the perimeter. Have yet to come inside the perimeter. Jacob McCall drives the lane, gets his swat batted, gets his own, or pardon me, Austin Rogers gets his rebound and up with a left-handed layup. O'Brien to Covington on the wing. Covington with a long two. No good. Parker, Austin Rogers with the rebound. He pushes the ball. Takes on pretty much the entire GAC team in the lane. No good. But Sidney Lovelace there to clean up his, his air ball for an up and under layup. And all of a sudden, it's a 16 to 10 ball game. And you might not co-sign that first shot, but that is the type of energy you want to see from Brubaker Tech. Don't wait. Don't let their defense get back and set. Push it. You might take some bad shots, have some misses in the mix, but it's going to put you in a much better position. Desmond Williams in transition with an open layup. 15, Jacob McCall got his hand on a pass on top of the wing, dished it out to Williams, and that was easy buckets for the freshman, the starter. Coffee drive to the lane, behind his back, pass to hit on the baseline. And they're going to call a block on Jacob McCall on the baseline. And Hinton to the line. That's the eighth foul. 16-12 ball game. Six minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And the big Chris Hinton to the free throw line for a one and one. His first is banked in. Huh. <laughs> hey, don't hate the player, hate the game. But 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 yeah, anytime you see the bank, the banked in free throw or the banked in anything, you know, other than Tim Duncan. I think Tim Duncan is the only guy we see do it, and it's kind of like, okay. Other than that, it's like the bank? Really? The bank? But he makes his second, so two for two from the line is hitting tonight. I think Paul Pierce had the best. Was that a bank, did you call it bank response out there last year with the, hey, I didn't call a bank, I just called a game. As we said earlier, ball never lies. Rogers up top to Williams. Williams with the ball at top of the key. Looks left. Dish on the baseline, up and under for Chandler Lewis is no good. That was blocked, Hoffman with the rebound. Coffey brings it out. Did a good job of getting out of pressure there on the full port press from Williams. And they're going to call a charge on Brian Coffey. Coffey lowered his shoulder just a bit, ran into the chest of Desmond Williams, and the refs award Brutek with the ball. GAC and man. Coffey on the point guard, Williams. Covington on the shooting guard, Austin Rogers. Oh, they're going to call a charge on number 32, Chandler Lewis. Got the ball on the top of the key, made a move left towards the baseline, went up on Hoffman. Hoffman took the charge. That one again, one that kind of could have gone either way. But because of an offensive foul, GAC will get the ball underneath their own basket. Inbound to Hoffman, back to Covington. 17-12, the Spartans lead. 
as Covington crosses half court. Hoffman on the wing, up top to Hinton. They're not afraid to bring Hinton out top of the key and let him handle the ball. Coffee drives the left of the lane, gets a left-handed underhand floater that just doesn't go. Rogers out in transition to Lovelace. Out to McCall, he drives the lane, he goes up, they count it. And that's a two for Sydney Lovelace who comes off the bench, the senior forward. Makes this a 17-14 ball game. Glass more than half full for Brubaker Tech after a slow start. You look at how much of a doldrums they were in to start this game. The fact that they're, it's a one possession margin. Uh, I think these guys are trying to get momentum going on their side. And they have not stopped attacking the basket. And whether they had some good shots under the basket or not good shots, it seemed to work out in their favor when they do go down low. That one there, he just drove the lane, tried to get contact, did, threw it up. Rim was friendly to him. Ball bounced in and uh, Lovelace, to, or pardon me, McCall to the line to shoot uh, a free throw here. And not to say it's an apples to apples comparison, but I, I look at it when you look at a player like a Russell Westbrook. When he first started, everybody said, you know, sometimes he rushes shot. He does this, he does that. Sometimes you just got to kind of take the risk and the reward that comes along with a high level of play and high energy. Going to be some missed shots, but then it's time where that motor is going to bail you out. Yeah. Exactly, and that looks like kind of the ball that Brutech is, Brutech is going to play. Coffee continues his dribbling escapades up top, puts up a long two, which is no good. I think they're going to call an over the back here on Covington. Brutech ball, that's Covington's first foul tonight. And it's going to send Austin Rogers to the line. Talking with Coach Eaton before the game, uh, one of the things he liked in that Lakeview win was their offense. He thought on defense they could have done a better job, but he also gave Lakeview credit for um, doing a good job of breaking their press and, and then being able to respond, respond to it well over the course of the game. I think GAC is going to have more pressure put on them as the game continues. That's Buck Bands, number five. Missed a layup, got his rebound, put it up again. And Brutech with the ball now. Parker drives the baseline. Pardon me, McCall drives the baseline, goes up for a jumper and gets fouled. Referees never really go out of shape. They kind of see the same basketball and know what to call all year long. But these players, this is their first, second, third game of the year. Their bodies aren't maybe necessarily as conditioned to staying off a shooter as they will be later on in the year. So that's maybe a reason we're seeing so many fouls so early. I tell you what, these, these refs will get them used to foul calls being called. That, <laughs> that curve won't be a very long one. McCall's first free throw up and in. Second free throw in and out. You mentioned that team foul scenario. It was 16 to fouls to two fouls when we looked at it. Now nine apiece. Coffee at the top of the key. He's motion over towards the left, gets a pick. There is some pushing and shoving, no call. Covington on the baseline, three, that's good. Covington with a three, and there GAC is back to their long ball ways. 22-16, the Spartans lead the Rams. Williams at the top of the key, dishes to Rogers. Rogers tries to push it into the middle of the lane, gets called for a travel. He's not happy with it. GAC is happy with it. They get the ball back. Hoffman inbounding here. Take a look at the ATL Peachy Lead Instant Replay, something else GAC is happy with, being able to get open looks for players that can knock the three ball down, AKA Garrett Covington, gcov.gov. And Brutech's man has seemed to fail him a couple times, too many open threes. They're gonna call a charge on what was just a mismatch. The big Chris Hoving, Chris, Garrett Covington on number four, Aaron Blue. A Brubaker Tech who probably measures something like 5'8", 150, if we're being generous. So, coming in just knocked him over. They call a charge. And now, GAC has, has more team fouls than Brutech. Hmm. Great job from Austin Rogers. Got the ball at the top of the key. Swung it right and just went right to the basket like we're talking about. That kind of aggressive play. It's going to get you opportunities, and here we see Rodgers back to the line. And we credited Rodgers with that, you know, because it's always easy to play armchair or whatever and to be off the court and to say, well, I wouldn't take that shot, I would do this, whatever the case may be. 
But with that being said, he does have to pick his spots to attack a little bit wiser. Doesn't get called for the offensive foul there, but you see how they're calling the game. There are times where the spacing isn't even appropriate for him to make that move, and he's in such a, a rush to go. So they're going to need his energy, but he still has to be smart because he can't do anything for him with three offensive fouls early in the game. And it'll be interesting to see if they stay aggressive and try to continue to get to the line, or like you said, they might get hurt. Uh, they might shoot themselves in the foot with charge calls, but we'll see it. what they do. Hoffman, deep three, in and out. That's his second in and out tonight. But you got to like him continue to shoot the ball. He's had good looks. That one was a bit contested, but a good look nonetheless. Four, Aaron Blue drives, and they're going to call a, a hand-checking foul on Jordan Williams of GAC. To the line to shoot two is Aaron Blue, the uh, junior guard, 5'10", 150. As I mentioned, if they're not used to hearing the whistle blown for fouls, these refs will get them going. I, I couldn't see where a foul happened on that play. Blue, first one up and in. I think they measured his five foot ten, uh, including his hair. <laughs> yeah, gotta count it. Gotta count that. And blue second is in. So again, the free throw line is becoming a friend of the Brew Tech Rams. 22 to 19 lead for GAC. Hoffman with the ball on the wing. He's guarded well from Sidney Lovelace. Comes right on the right side, dishes it to Hunter McIntosh. Travel. Jordan Williams took that ball in stride. I think if he went up for a shot, they might not have called that. He looked like he stepped into it, but then did not shoot it, went for a pass. They called a travel. Rams basketball. Long three for Austin Rogers, and it's good. Tie ball game. First tie ball game so far tonight. Austin Rogers with his eighth point of tonight's basketball game, and that's a steal. Jacob McCall, left hand layup and in. First lead of the night for the Rams, 24-22. Brian Coffey at the scores table. He, he can't wait. He can't get the next dead ball soon enough. Chris Hinton joins him here. Strong move there from yep. Jordan Williams to try to put it up. Rebounded by his team, Anthony Carter. Who goes up, gets fouled, and is going to the line to shoot two. Anthony Carter with a three-pointer earlier in the game. He misses his first free throw. And now the big Chris Hinton and Brian Coffey check into the game. Jordan Williams and Buck Blands come out. Second free throw is good from Anthony Carter. 24-23 Rams lead. Austin Rogers brings it up the court. Fade away, bank shot is just short. Coffey with the rebound, he's looking to push the pace. Crosses half court, gets a pick from Hinton. Missed Hoffman wide open on the, on the wing. Three second call on Greater Atlanta Christian. This Brew Tech team, Marcus, is interesting because you've got Austin Rogers, who's your point guard, but in this set, he's also your biggest player. There's no, there's no movement down low unless he's gonna create it for them. A long three. It's good from Desmond Williams. That gives the Rams a four point lead. That's Williams' second three tonight. He's got eight points. I like the freshman out there. I mean, Captain Obvious, you, you know he can go with the fact that he's in the starting lineup, period, but showing it, not just on paper here in this one. He's confident, no doubt. Hoffman remains confident. You got it. Hinton with the offensive rebound, goes up strong, gets a foul called. He'll go to the line. Hoffman, after starting two for two from three, is now 0 for three from beyond the arc. But all three have hit the front rim, bounced off the back, and went out. So you definitely want to want him to keep shooting the way it is. You you got to expect he'll find one here soon. But hitting to the line, his first free throw. As we saw Desmond Williams Good. find his second one there on that last replay. Desmond Williams, no no lack of confidence from the freshman there. Hinton, four from four from the line. After banking in that first one, I was wondering how his night was going to go, but he's four for four so far. Looks like he got himself under control. 
Williams, a freshman with the ball at the top of the key. Passes it inside to Sydney Lovelace, who gets it outside to Rogers. Brings it around to Aaron Blue, tries to shoot a three. And Anthony Carter with a big swat. Out of bounds. Brew Tech Rams ball. Show the fans a little love there. Let them touch the game ball as well. Smack it out to, to row three. Errant pass from Blue. Three on one. Covington leads it. McIntosh back to Covington. Pardon me. Anthony Carter leads it. He got the ball back. He went up and in for two. That's his sixth point of the day. Williams at the top of the key inside to McCall. Dishes it out to Rogers. Back to Williams. Inside to McCall. Inside to Parker. Out. And the three is good from Aaron Blue, the junior guard. With his first three of the night, fifth point of the night, Coffee brings it up. Now on a set like this, I'd like to see them clear out and let Hinton go to work down low because he's got probably 30 pounds on their down low. Coffee last second air ball in the first quarter is wide. At the end of one, it's 30 to 27 in favor of the Brute Tech Rams over Great Atlanta Christian. See this ball movement in the instant replay. They're looking a lot more comfortable than when they started the game, Colin. Draw the defense in, dish it out, three is good. I was blue on that one. Aaron Blue. Cold Blue sends us into halftime. I'll be back with Colin Ritchie after this. Better network as explained in a galaxy far, far away. Some networks promise unlimited data. Then they slow your downloads after just a gig or two. Stuff. Because when data is your only hope, better matters. Star Wars The Force Awakens, December 18th. The feeling of the perfect shot feels effortless to me. Right when I release that shot, it just feels serene and quiet. It's only me and the rim and the basketball. to have an impact and to be the player that I wanted to be. I needed to change my shot, and that was going to be something that would be beneficial for the long term. The process started just breaking my shot down from the initial release to the follow through. And there were days that I couldn't even get the ball to the rim. There were days that I couldn't go outside of the paint area. It was very frustrating to not be able to, to shoot the way that I wanted to. The hardest part of that process was definitely the patience. But if I just stuck to getting better every day, eventually I would be able to shoot where I wanted to, anywhere on the floor. I went through some tough days, but found a way to just persevere and see it through. with a great base and great foundation and allows everything to feel perfect. I can do all things.
Welcome back alongside Marcus Burnett. I am Colin Ritzik here reporting to you from SUV TV live broadcast here between Brutech and the Great Atlanta Christian Spartans. We're here at St. Francis High School in Alpharetta. Second game of four coming to you live today in the Verizon Hoops for Akira Classic kickoff Friday. Coffee, no good. The tip, no good. Rebound by Rogers. He pushes the floor. He's got numbers. Desmond Williams, the freshman, just a little long on the rebound. Is Hoffman, balls on the floor. Austin Rogers got his shot blocked out of bounds there for Brute Tech. The Rams out of Montgomery, Alabama lead GAC 30 to 27. Good hands there from hitting the big man. Good pass in transition. Left handed layup from Coffee. And no basket. Number 32, Charlie O'Brien unnecessarily tried to tip the ball in. It was going in regardless. They called goaltending. No points. And you didn't see Coach Eden really get on him too tough there. I think he liked the fact that he was going trying to finish the play. A little overzealous, but I, I think he could appreciate the rationale behind it. Yeah, and that's the kind of the kind of play like that where you know you just robbed your team of two points. You're going to learn from that. You don't need to be laid into by your coach to understand what you did wrong on that one. He liked the aggressiveness. Speaking of aggressiveness, Sean Barnes, Brute Tech just ripped the ball out of the much bigger Jakob Hoffman hand, sent him to the ground, went up, took some more contact, and finished strong with a layup. And that's where Jakob, he just has to be stronger with the ball there. One guy wanted it more and took it. Good move there from Austin Rogers. Got the lane, got the, the open look. He just didn't quite uh, give the ball enough strength as he needed to get up over the rim. Kind of left it hanging there on the front rim. I think he was a little farther out than he expected. Had a finger roll and just kind of left it short. GAC ball down 5, 32, 27 here in the third quarter. Coffee to O'Brien, O'Brien to Hinton down low. Does a good job of corralling it in. Pass to Hoffman, three in the corner is no good. Out of After starting two for two, Hoffman is now over four from beyond the arc. He's out on the line guarding Williams. Williams dishes it down low to Rogers. Rogers baseline, creates room, no good. Covington with a rebound. Gets it stolen by Williams, a freshman. Good pass. Up and under, no good. Good hustle defense for O'Brien to make Austin Rogers go up and try to finish it on the other side. And we, take a, we take a look at the replay of that one. Not only did he take the cookies, nice quick hand shown by the freshman. I love how he made the defender commit. Didn't make that pass prematurely, wasn't predetermined to shoot the shot. Really did a good job of forcing him to commit there before dropping it off. And Rogers misses his first of two free throws. O'Brien comes off the floor. Anthony Carter comes on the floor. And he missed his second. Missed opportunity for Brute Tech. Ball goes out of bounds in GAC. With the ball. Coffee brings it up the floor. He's got Gary Covington, Jakob Hoffman, Anthony Carter, and Chris Hinton on the floor. Covington swings it around up top. Over to Hoffman, nearly tipped out. Baseline is Covington, good pass. Open three, baseline, short. And then a push by Anthony Carter. Leading scorer in the first half for GAC was Anthony Carter with six points. Little up and in finger roll there for Shane Parker. And they're gonna call a travel on Coffee. Or pardon me, on Hinton. And you gotta watch it because, I mean, if you're Brew Tech, 
you don't want to fall behind and just take for granted that you can come back, but it seems like they had a little bit more firepower to maybe force a couple turnovers, get back into the game quickly. If you're GAC, you don't want to let that advantage that Brutech has swell up too much because they're going to continue to pressure you, and you'll expound so much energy just staying in striking distance. It may be hard to get over the hump as this second half goes on. Williams inbounds it to Sean Barnes. GAC's been in man this whole game, as has Brutech. Three from Williams misses the mark, and Hoffman knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with Brutech. Talked with Coach Eden prior to the game, and he talked about how even though he liked what, what he saw, you know, offensively from Covington and, uh, and Coffee from last game, he really challenged them to bring more, uh, just in terms of their toughness, in terms of the way they defend. And he said they responded well in practice. It's going to take that in this game as well. You know, Brutech, we've seen some 50-50 balls where they've just wanted it more and have taken it. Comes to a point where GAC is going to have to just match their physicality, I think, in order to stick around. I agree, and I think that can start by working the ball inside. I'm not saying Chris Hinton needs to shoot all their shots as yeah. we see a three miss the mark from Hunter McIntosh, but they're working outside, and they have a major mismatch inside. If they at least get hitting the ball, draw some defenders, then they can kick it out like they did at the beginning of the game. I feel like, you know, you got Coffee, who's real skilled. His, his ears must have been burning. And, you know, he's a specialty guy. He can score the ball at multiple levels. And you've got some good players on the Brutech side, but I feel like they're doing more things by committee on both ends than we're seeing GAC do early on. Yep. Ball's out to Williams. Rodgers with a three. That one's off the mark. Hoffman goes up for the rebound. Coffee brings it up. Looks to be aggressive. Jump pop in the lane. No, don't make that call. They call it travel. I know it's not traditional looking, but that's not a travel, sir. They called a, a jump step for travel of a similar fashion in the, in the girls game we just finished watching. And I thought that one was a little shaky too. They called again on Coffee here. Yeah, sometimes you just see those calls where the official makes makes that face just like, whoa, it has to be something wrong with that face. <laughs> it's like in a <laughs> I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the scene from that Will Ferrell movie with the alley oop. The um what, semi pro? Semi pro oh, yeah, they right, throw exactly. the alley oop and the refs go, uh something's gotta we gotta call something. Exactly. And Desmond Williams gets us back on track here as he knocks in a jumper from the elbow. Semi-pro, thank you for the save, Marcus. No problem, man. Teamwork making the dream work. Head coach Chauncey shines for Brew Tech, man. He has to like the leadership from a senior that he's seen in Rodgers, but then also the young gun showing that he's willing to contribute and play well here on the road uh, there in number 11, Williams. And he's had the ball up top for a lot of their possessions. The offense clearly trusts him to run uh, the game for him. 38-30, Brew Tech leads. Take a look at an ATL PT Leap Series instant replay while we have a second. Talked about coffee. That one's a good three, four feet behind the three point line. Still in range. Six three pointers made for GAC so far tonight. That's 18 of their 30 points from beyond the arc. And like we talked about earlier, that kind of speaks to them being a little more content putting up a shot rather than working the ball around and trying to find a hole uh, and playing more team basketball. So Coffee's going to get a breather. I think Coach Eden has been smart knowing when to sub him in and out uh, you know, over the course of this game. Type of pressure Brutech applies. They're going to need some gas in the tank. But it's interesting to see how GAC responds during this stretch with Coffee on the bench, currently trailing by eight. Hoffman with a three, short, gets his own rebound. Could have been a double dribble, no call. Ball back to Brutech, they corner him in the corner. Ball's thrown out of bounds by Brutech. GAC gets the ball back. Good defense uh, combination there from Basil Peterson and Jakob Hoffman. Jakob and Basil. <laughs> Covington with the ball here now. Dishes over to Hunter McIntosh. McIntosh drive through the lane, up and under left hand, just off the under, underside of the rim. The call with the rebound, he pushes the floor, dishes back out to Parker Williams. 
over to Sean Barnes, back to Williams, back to Barnes. Brutech seems to be pretty content to stay outside of the arc unless they have a wide open lane to drive through. But what they're doing right now is, is what we're not seeing GAC do. They're moving the ball even if it is a little bit. They've had probably seven passes on that drive. Yeah. Coming to him, good line, drive on the baseline, gets his own rebound, puts it back up. Good finish from Covington. He says, I know Coffee's getting a breather now, but we'll, we'll be good. We'll be good. Tough D from Covington on the baseline, ball swings around to the other side of the floor, gets Hoffman on his feet. They've Austin done, Rogers. They've done a good job against Rogers defensively here in the second half. Rogers had nine points in the first half. None so far here in the second. He drives the baseline, just powers through. Gets <laughs> Hoffman on his feet. Doesn't get much of a contest from number five, Buck Blands. And uh, as I spoke, there's Austin Rogers' first points of the half. Yeah, man, he must have had a pair of those Buffalo Wild Wings earbuds in his ears. He heard <laughs> us talking about how he was scoreless in the second half. He he muscled that one through through uh, two Trojans, two Spartans, I should say. Ball knocked away. The freshman Williams, who's been all over the place tonight on the tip, but instant replay here of, of Austin Rogers gets backs Hoffman up, gets almost no contest from Blands and just powers through two Spartans. And, and that's what I'm saying. As the season goes on, as this game goes on, he can't do that. Um, you know, if, if he does it through a little bit, you know, some sort of foul, some sort of contact, it cannot be that easy to go through two guys. I, I think on the GAC side, I don't see them letting you power through two guys like that uh, if you're on the offensive end. So it's got to be that same way, reciprocity there. Yep. Ball out. To Basil Peterson, swings it to Covington, swings it to Hoffman. Hoffman working along the three line, driving the lane, gets a jump float, no good. Great defensive, or er, defensive offensive play from Hunter McIntosh, saves the ball out of bounds, throws it off of number 32 Chandler Lewis and it remains Spartan ball. Hoffman with the inbound. McIntosh back to Hoffman, Hoffman for three. That one is good from the baseline. Hoffman. Back in the black, that is his third three of the night. He has nine points. GAC trails by five, 40 to 35, as Williams answers with a three of his own as the quarter comes to a close. Williams gets some praise from his teammates as the freshman makes his second three of the night. That's 10 points for, for Desmond Williams, the 5'11 freshman guard. Take a look at it, man. That one was deep hand and face. Good defense, better offense. What could you do different here? Just pure athleticism making its way out. Had to jump high. He was far back. Kept his, his upper body still, though. Stayed with his stroke and, and knocked it in. Freshman's having a fun trip to the Atlanta area here so far in this one. Take a look at some of the upcoming stops for the ATL Peachy Leap. We're here tonight. Tomorrow, we'll start off Jared Cook Classic coverage. That'll run 21st, 23rd, and 24th over at North Gwinnett High School. We'll have holiday hoops giving and the On the Radar Hoops Invitational for you as well in November. Those will round out the November slate. We'll touch base on some of the other dates and stops when we get more time. That th third quarter just flew by. Yeah, it did. As many whistles as we had in the first quarter, I think eight or nine team fouls. We only had three last quarter. So 43, Brew Breaker leads GAC with 35. Coffee back in the game. He makes a good dribble drive in the lane. Kiss off the glass on the finger roll, 43-37. And they're pressing now, forced a bad pass. And just in time, the Rams get it past half court. And they call a foul on Hoffman. Hoffman caught the elbow of number 15, Jacob McCall, as he was going up. Partner number 32, Chandler Lewis, as he was going up under the basket. Quick second, another replay. Gave Coach Eaton kudos for really making sure 
Uh, he substitutes coffee when needed. Comes right off the bench. It's time to get back to work. Lays that one in. Coffee got a little bit of help there from a tripping and falling Chandler Lewis, but nonetheless, Lewis here misses his first. Makes his second. His first points of the evening. Seven point ball game with a little over seven minutes remaining. Covington, long on his shot, rebounded by Rogers. He pushes it up the floor, dishes to Williams. Williams in the corner to Bacall. They're gonna swing it back. J1 Courtner's in the game on the far wing. Rogers back to Williams. Williams over to Courtner. I give Rutex some credit. Early on, they really had to have a sense of urgency just to kind of get on the board. But since they've established a seven, eight point cushion, they look different in the half court than they did early on. Part of that is just getting loose, but I give them credit for not just uh, being pigeonholed into a, you know, a, a fast break team. You know, they're, they're looking better in the half court as this game goes on. Chris passes, good, good uh, off ball movement, running lanes, passing lanes have opened up. They're finding open shots and they have a seven point lead here. 44 to 37. Take a quick time out with them. We'll be back with more here live from the Verizon Hoops for the Cure Classic. Back with Brute Tech in possession of the ball. And Sean Barnes crosses over half court. Aaron throw, but they're going to call a foul on Charlie O'Brien. Another situation with O'Brien kind of in the wrong place at the right time, hurting his team with unnecessary penalties, but he's hustling. Can't knock the hustle. Cannot knock the hustle. Bad inbounds pass for Brute Tech. Thankfully, Williams goes and grabs it right underneath the rim. And he'll bring it back up. Good pressure D in the corner, trying to contain Rodgers. Very good defense there. Credit Rodgers for being able to, to avoid the turnover there. I thought between Coffey, Covington, and that sideline serving as a third defender there, he wasn't going to have anywhere to go. He did a good job of squeaking out, getting the ball across the baseline. Went up to Sean Barnes. Barnes made a drive. Saw a bit of a lane, went up with O'Brien at the same time. They called a foul on O'Brien as Barnes is set to shoot two that I think could have either gone either way or been a no call. That was just good hard basketball. Uh, there wasn't really any slapping or, or too much contact involved. But Barnes misses his first. And O'Brien takes a seat. And this is what I talked about about five or six minutes ago. You, you look at GAC, they're putting out a lot of energy trying to turn the pressure up on Brutech and, uh, and, and try to get some turnovers. But, man, that takes its toll, especially with a Brutech team that, that doesn't mind a track meet. So we'll see if that battle of attrition will uh, actually go in favor of GAC. See, it seems like they're taking as a good tip from Chris Hinton there. I was just going to say, it seems like they're – Put all this energy on defense, trapping right here as we see. And they almost created a turnover. They're playing good team defense. Yep. And, but on the other end, it, it seems kind of like hey, hey, pick up ball. Not much of an offensive scheme making its way out. As Coffey just went in there, another floater from the lane. Thankfully, Hinton saved him with a tip in. Like how GAC is getting stingier, getting a little bit more physical on the defensive end. Nice change of speed there. Coach Eaton still taking it like a champ, but even him, okay, guys, I've given you your mulligan in terms of the offensive goaltending. The ball's in the cylinder, leave it alone. And that is another basket taken away from GAC by uh, offensive goaltending. That one and two looked like it was gonna fall. That's number 12, Hunter McIntosh made a very good defensive play to get the ball and drive as Brutech, number 32, Chandler Lewis, banks one in with his left hand.
McIntosh drives again, dishes down low. Covington and one. Gets the two, he'll have a chance for the one. The GAC bench is loving it. 47-41 now. Five minutes, 32 seconds remain. Talk about matching some of that physicality inside. We look at the ATL Peachy League replay. You should know the website by now, right, Colin? You got to know the website by now. If you haven't, you haven't been listening. I was talking about Garrett Covington, man. Gcov.gov, oh, man. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. I was, I was checking my notes. I honestly didn't even know what you're talking about. No doubt, I threw you for a loop there, man. You got SU, the SUV TV website all in the production brief. So yeah, I, I kind of threw you a curveball there, man. Got to keep you on your toes, man. I appreciate it, keeping me accountable. Foul here from GAC. That's their sixth team foul. One away from letting uh, Brute Tech get some free shots. Austin Rogers is going to draw a blocking call, and he'll head to the line for a one and one Fouls on Hunter McIntosh. Just didn't have his feet set a little late to the ball on defense and uh, got burned by Parker there. Rodgers has 11 points on the evening so far. Shooting a one and one here. First one is good. Rodgers makes the first attempt. Second one is good. And that pushes the Rams lead to 49-42 as GAC takes a full timeout talk it over and see what they can create in these last five minutes. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back here at St. Francis from GAC and Brubaker Tech. Welcome back. Uh, we just missed Jakob Hoffman with a solid drive to the basket. Skied up alongside of J1 Corner, who was called for the foul. And we have Hoffman at the line shooting two. His first free throws of the evening. Really credit Hoffman for how he attacked the rim there, initiated the contact. We talked about GAC needing to up the ante on that as the game went on, giving credit where it's due. They've been able to do that. But for Brew Tech, they've responded. They've bended but not haven't broken all over the past stretch. Well, Hoffa goes two for two from the line. Brings it within five. 49-44, the Rams lead the Spartans here with just under five minutes to play. Four-court press from GAC. Corner pressure leaves a wide open. Sydney Lovelace for a layup. Too many hands on the ball, nobody paying attention off the ball. Gave the Ram just easy buckets. Hoffman has it off the wing with a deep three, in and out. He has come so close to having probably almost a 20 point game by now. But that's his fourth three ball that's gone in and out. Williams with it up top over to Jaywan Kortner. Courtner drives left, dishes it down. Good defense. Hunter McIntosh makes a play, but couldn't handle it as the ball goes out of bounds. Rams ball here on the sideline, right by the scorer's table. Williams to Lovelace. Austin Rogers up top. 
He's been driving a lot, does so again. Spin move, gets pressure, dishes it underside. Good pass, but not really anything going for Sean Barnes. Brutek gets the ball back on a steal here, and a travel called on Desmond Williams while he was still dribbling. That's the second time we've seen, you know, a fast break trying to get started, and the freshman just pick a pocket before it can even happen. He's quick and he's long. His arms are abnormally long for his body size. And 10 with a Garrett Covington. Gov.gov yes, with sir. a nice <laughs> jump step in the lane, finishes it with the right hand, and then he is called for a block on the other end. 51-46, Rams lead the Spartans. You see co seeing Covington really take it personal uh, in terms of guarding, uh, taking that assignment of Austin Rogers, making things tough on that play where Rogers got caught in the air and threw it into a turnover. That was great defense by, uh, by Covington. Against a player, it's not easy to stay in front of uh, or to not let, you know, muscle you and, and use that position inside. Barnes is first from the line is good. This to make it a seven point game. No good. Call an infraction on Brutech regardless, so that point would not have mattered even if it went in. Spartans carry the ball up, Coffee. Hoffman on the floor, McIntosh, Covington, and Carter. Hoffman in the corner. Jab steps, goes left, spins right. Fighting, jumper, turns around, air balls. However, we do have a foul called on Anthony Carter against GAC. Now, now not trying to limit Hoffman, but in terms of your strength and the playmaker you have out there for you and Brian Coffey, you spot up, get ready to shoot. He's been able to get some good looks this game. Not all of them have fallen, but I like how he's been aggressive. He hasn't let the misses deter him, and, uh, you know, he hasn't hesitated. But pick your spot versus you facing up against uh, against uh, Rodgers and trying to create that way. Now that play that we just saw from Hoffman, do you – same exact play, but if it's Coffey taking the ball, do you think that is a, a better – shot trying to create his own shot there on the baseline not necessarily because i think he can do so much uh you know setting up the offense and being able to get covington involved he can really let covington and hoffman work on the wings in terms of covington being able to make that move draw the defense and kick out and hoffman just spotting up you know you're one of the better three-point shooters on this team you know focus on that strength versus uh you know what he tries to do against rogers and speaking of, Rodgers, he just powered up a layup right before the timeout was called to give the Rams a nine-point lead, their largest lead of the game, 55-46 with 319 remaining. It's looking grim here for the Spartans. And it's always two elements. It's You do realize that, you know, Hoffman's just trying to make a play for his team there. So, you know, you understand that. But the good teams, the good players, they're, they're able to get back to the fundamentals that they knew going into practice or you know prior to the game. So we might see that same, it's three minutes, 19 seconds left in this game. We may see that same type of situation, see him pass the ball, move without it off a couple of screens and knock down the three point. You know, so, so when we make certain assessments, uh, you know, we do understand that in, in the game, the adrenaline, these kids are just trying to do what they can to help their team win and mistakes are gonna be made. But how do you make up for that the next play? And I think GAC over the course of this game and different elements, they've gotten better and made the adjustment. Credit to Brutech, they've just been able to make that counter when they have done so. And they've, Brutech has done a good job of kind of stopping momentum. Anytime yeah. GAC's had a big bucket and, and had their next possession, steals or, or defensive stops have been plenty for Brutech. As Coffee misses a three, and the Rams take the ball up top. Good pressure, bad pass, but nonetheless, it's corralled from Sean Barnes. Courtner up top with the ball. Barnes just weaving through traffic. They're uh, just trying to tick some time off the clock while also looking for a lane, but they're not driving straight off a dribble or a pass like they were earlier realizing that time is on their side now with 2.37 remaining. Number 23, Jawan Porter at the free throw line for the Rams. Basil Peterson checks in for Hunter McIntosh. Chris Hinton checks in for Anthony Carter. Hinton. 
I mean, with 237, two minutes, 37 seconds still left in this fourth quarter, game not out of reach by any means. It is a it is a tough task just when you look at Brute Tech's ability to sort of spread that floor out and drain some clock, but we've seen stranger things happen with less time. Quarter misses his first free throw, makes his second, and makes it a 10-point ball game. Just over two and a half. Good pass into Hinton, and that's that's what I've been waiting to see more of, is a set piece design to go to Hinton and let him create a shot down low, use his body to his advantage, because there's nobody on the floor, or even really on Brutek's team, that can size up against him. They got it in there quickly there, no, no time to spare here, 2.30 on the game clock. And another bank free throw from Hinton. Nine point ball game. I can't verify it, but I'm gonna go out on the limb and say Hinton's played a little football in his day. I <laughs> would agree with you on that one. Like we said, we don't want to report any false information, but. Safe assumption. Safe assumption. He looks like he might have had some defensive line in his background. And if he's not, I'm, I'm asking him every, every couple weeks if he wants to try, <laughs> if, if I'm the coach. He missed the second free throw, and it's 56-47 as Brutek is kind of playing keep away here. Foul committed by Covington on the baseline against Austin Rogers. He'll go to the line to shoot two. GAC with their 10th team foul. They've been there in the double bonus. Brutech only has four team fouls in the second half. They've done a very good job of cleaning up their, uh, their defense and their hand checking here in the second half. Rogers missed the first, makes the second. He's going to force all game long for them all over the court. Yeah. Coffee in the lane, left hander missed off the back of the rim. And that's the kind of shot you're talking about where Coffee can create that shot and get an open look, whereas perhaps somebody like Hoffman can't. Good team defense leads to a wide open two missed layups from Austin Rogers as the ball was. Reversed across court. He had a good look, but just couldn't make it. Coffee with three. Long. He dishes to Covington in the corner. He'll try a three. Short. Good, good job batting the ball away from number five, Sean Barnes. Covington got his own rebound there. Coffee pump fake. Move left. Hits a jumper from the elbow to make it a 57-49 game. One minute, 18 seconds left. The clock is not in favor of GAC, but we'll see what they can pull out here in this last one minute, 18 seconds. And you mentioned Coffee being able to get to the rack, create shots, and not to say that, uh, you know, Hoffman won't be able to do it at the same clip as a Coffee, but not to say he is just relegated to being a three-point shooter, but I think when you look at an Isaiah Wilkins, the former GAC player, he was the perfect example of just doing what you do well and doing it within the offense based on the pieces around you. You know, when he first started off playing there, uh, you know, Coach uh, uh, Coach Eddie Martin was there at the time, and he was really just a rebounder, hustle, motor guy. Slowly but surely, he added pieces. He got to the point where his mid-range was solid, and even though he had that athleticism, you rarely saw him force a shot, shots that he probably could have tried to take and, and wouldn't have gotten yanked for. He just did a great job specializing, and I know what my strengths are. That's what I'll focus on, and, and I'll, be, I'll try to use the strengths around me in terms of my teammates. And to that point, this isn't necessarily a stat that gets kept, but if there was one, I think forced shots, well, there'd be much more on GAC's side of the table than there is on Brutex. They don't seem to make really any bad, poor decisions on, on shot making. Foul called on GAC. It's going to send Sean Barnes to the line to shoot two more. J1 Cortner to the line to shoot two more. Number 23, Jawan Cortner. This, this could end up being a long final two minutes for us. <laughs> I remember saying it was two minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. That seemed like about 15 minutes ago. I think from two minutes down, it's probably going to take about as much time as the entire third quarter did. Cordner makes both of his free throws and makes the lead back uh, to a 10-point ball game. Coffee to Basil. Peterson in the corner. Peterson air balls. 
he looks like he was a little excited to shoot that ball. But good rebound from Covington, who goes up and, and puts it in for two. 59-51 the score with 47 remaining. And Sean Barnes gets fouled from Peterson, and he'll head to the line to shoot two. Barnes makes the first. That's his fifth point of the game. And he makes the second. Hinton, power move. His hook shot did not find the rim. Or find the bottom of the bucket. That's weight room right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just bodies. That's weight room, and, and we might lo lose this game, but I tell you what, take that with you. Sidney Lovelace <laughs> took a Chris Hinton shoulder right to his sternum and back back about two feet. Hinton had an open shot, just couldn't get it to fall. And Barnes just airballed a free throw. Yeah, Lovelace knocked right down, got right back up. Twenty seconds remain, nine point game. Hoffman from the corner, three, no good. Air ball. And Lovelace with an open and layup. Slams the door on this one. Three seconds remain. Williams almost steals the ball. Hoffman three, that does not matter. And the Brubaker Tech Rams win 64-53. Brubaker Tech here at uh, the Verizon Hoops for Akira Classic is already 2-0. Greater Atlanta Christian loses their second game. Pardon me, loses their first game of the year. They moved to 1-1 one one on the season. Austin Rodden, Brubaker Tech, had 16 points tonight. Garrett Covington of JC had 11 Jakob Hoffman had 11, and Brian Coffey had 10. Lovelace pitched in 11 points for Brubaker. And Desmond Williams, who played much more than his point total will show you, had 10 points, probably three steals, two or three steals, some good passes. And we are 15 minutes away from our next game between the St. Francis girls team and Sequoia, yep. Sequoia girls. St. Francis takes the floor, Sequoia set to take the floor. We will be back for live coverage of that game here on SUV TV.